everyone what is up welcome back to my channel i'm currently getting ready for the day it feels weird to be turning on the camera right now and not talking to you guys about moving content because i feel like i've been doing so much moving content on my channel i decided to take this week off from filming moving content just so i can give myself a minute to get inspired you guys have been giving me so so many good pieces of advice on the video i just uploaded so i wanted to say thank you so much you have such good design ideas and i'm really looking forward to filming the next moving vlog but for now i'm just going to give myself a little bit of time off this week from that because i really do need to get back to work because uh, I need to make some money. It's been an expensive month. I was actually looking at my calendar and this is the first week of April, which means it is the four year anniversary this week of when I got fired from my English teaching job in Korea via text message. Was anybody around for that? chaotic era in my life comment below if you guys have been here since then what a freaking time that was if you guys are new to my channel i moved to korea in summer of 2019 literally right after i graduated college i didn't know a single person who lived here and i just came very spontaneously to teach english just for like a little post-college adventure obviously covid started soon after that and i was off of work for the whole month of like february 2020 as well as march 2020 and then april 2nd i received a text from my boss and i got fired by text message because our school just wasn't making any money we were closed and they didn't have any more money to help me with like my housing or anything like that so they were just like goodbye it's really crazy like how things ended up going after that because of my youtube channel i was able to switch to a visa that is for entertainers in korea similar to how like a school would sponsor a student visa i have an agency that sponsors my visa here so whenever i get asked like what is your job in korea i typically just tell people i am a freelancer because i really do a little bit of everything. I've done some content creation obviously here on my YouTube channel. I will do government projects when a government agency hires me to go film something in Korea. I've done a little bit of part-time modeling. One of the most interesting things I got to do here in Korea was be an extra in Squid Game. That was really really fun and unexpected. Basically anything that falls under my visa guidelines I'm open to doing but the only thing is like I can't just go pick up a part-time teaching or tutoring job because that's not covered under my visa so when i say i'm a freelancer kind of take it with a grain of salt i don't do like everything so all of that is to say every week is pretty much a little bit different and i feel like if you are a freelancer yourself you can probably relate to that you really never know what the next month is gonna bring i will say i feel like my busiest season tends to be summer and winter in the summer i tend to get hired for a lot of government travel jobs where i go and i'll like film somewhere in korea and i actually got hired to do one of those this week so it's not until a few days later but i thought for this video i would just bring you guys around for a few days in my life as a freelancer i feel like with all the moving content i've been keeping you guys here inside my house and i miss taking you outside so i'm gonna make a bigger effort this week to just take you around and about for a few days in my life but yeah i'm very very grateful for my job i love it so much i definitely don't think freelance life is for everyone it can be a bit anxiety inducing sometimes like wondering you know if brands are gonna hire you to do stuff or how are you gonna make money but i am proud of myself because i feel like the older i've gotten the better i've become with money management so i'm not the type of person who will just like spend their paycheck as soon as they get it because i know from experience that just because you make a bunch of money one month does not mean you're going to make the same amount of money the next month i know some of you guys want to come over to korea and get yourselves into like the modeling or the acting industry here which is awesome there's literally so many roles for that it's just important to know that it is not a study lifestyle at all but it is super rewarding and it's definitely a fun industry to be a part of so yeah that's a little bit about my life and my job here in korea a lot of people don't know i came here as an english teacher i have tons of english teaching jobs on my channel it's really funny to look back at that time because i just was so young like i was so new to korea i didn't know anything it's it's a very cute time in my life to look back on anyways i'm just getting ready right now because i have a little day date plan with my friend we are actually taking our dogs to an ophthalmologist here in korea like an eye doctor because my dog she has been having vision problems for a while like she's had cataracts and 
We're gonna go check her eyes out, see how much she can really see. My friend happens to have the same exact breed as I have and the same age. So we have like that really tight connection just because our dogs are so similar. And after their appointment, we're gonna take them to go see the cherry blossoms because the cherry blossoms are out in full bloom. It's literally so gorgeous. I'm so excited to go to a new place to check them out. And yeah, besides that this week, I just have a couple like odd things to do for work. And then later this week, I will have the big work trip, which I'm really looking forward to. Welcome to a few days in my life as a freelancer in Korea. If you like these types of videos, definitely let me know. And as I said, more moving vlogs are to come. I just wanted to give myself like a couple of days off this week to, you know, get that like creative juice back in my head because I feel like the past few weeks I've been like constantly trying to do stuff. And a huge shout out to all of you guys who have been giving me like advice on what furniture I should get. It is so, so helpful. And thank you so much for all the support on my recent videos. It means a ton. <laughs> Hi, it is the evening now. I have been just doing a little bit of practice for voice acting because that's something I've been thinking about getting into. Today was a really good day. It was so nice just being out in the fresh air and spending time with my friend. And I wanted to update you guys quickly about how Cleo's appointment went. So according to the doctor, Cleo can see about 5% and he says that she can pretty much just like decipher light from dark right now. I personally don't think Cleo is completely blind because she can still get around inside and outside the house. She doesn't run into things. The only thing that I've really noticed is at night, I have to be extra careful because she will sometimes not see ledges when I take her out. I have been given two options either eye drops for the rest of her life to prevent infection that can be caused by her cataracts or I can start thinking about possibly doing double cataract surgery on her which can hopefully improve her vision. It's been proven to help seniors. The thing I'm worried about right now is just the effects of anesthesia and the effects of the surgery because I do know that there are side effects so I'm about to spend probably the next week doing some heavy research on whether or not I want to do that surgery. It's also very expensive, but when I think about how much it could improve her quality of life, I am actually very open-minded to doing it. Any of you guys have had dogs that you've done the cataract surgery, let me know. I know that plenty of dogs do get around just fine with being blind. So I am aware that I don't have to do the surgery. But yeah, I just wanted to update you guys because I know a lot of you care about Cleo and I didn't want to just leave you hanging like that. I had a really good experience at that optometrist. Optima optometrist? What's it called? Hold on. Optometrist. Optometrist. The doctor I saw was actually the first optometrist ever in Korea. So I definitely trust him and I think... If I did go the surgery route, she would be in good hands. I'll keep you updated on Miss Cleo and I'll see you tomorrow. from rainy, cloudy, dreary Busan. The weather today could not be any more ugly, so it is definitely gonna be a stay inside type of day. I am very proud of myself because I pushed through, I got out of bed, went to my workout early this morning and came home, made a smoothie, showered, and now we're here, but I definitely plan on staying 
in today. The main thing on my work schedule today is going to be editing a bunch of reels and then also planning out my Instagram feed because I realized the other day I have so many photos that I have just not posted. Photos that I really like and I want them to be on my feed just for the sake of memories. And I've always just been like the past few years, honestly, I've just avoided posting on my Instagram feed because I either overthink things, I think I don't look good enough or the lighting isn't good enough or something like that. I can't think of a caption or I just forget. So I'm gonna sit down today and designate my time to planning all that out. And I think I'm gonna get some kind of app that has like a good like planning system. When I got back from the gym this morning, I had a couple packages waiting for me. I did some late night online shopping just for three pieces of clothing that I wanted to try on. I have a business trip this Friday. I'm going to a very small town a couple hours away and I'm filming a couple different parks that have really nice cherry blossoms. I realized that I literally don't have any pink clothing, I'm pretty sure. So I was like, it would be nice to have a little pink shirt or something like that, just like a little pop of color. And these are all actually free size, which is such a hit or miss kind of thing for me. We're gonna try these on. Let's cross our fingers that something fits. So it's straight off we have some cute little white casual sweatpants i'm a big sweatpant girly i very much would prefer to wear something like these over jeans any day okay let's put these on are you gonna be my little helper okay pants number one i think these are a winner super super comfortable they're airy so they're not too thick meaning i feel like they're gonna be a really good spring transitional piece Wow, I think we actually have another winner. This cute little pink um, top. It's not really a crop top, like you can't see my belly with it, but it's definitely not like super, super long. Obviously I'll probably just wear it with like some kind of nude bodysuit so that you can't see any line here. It definitely feels so weird though to see myself wearing pink because I feel like I'm always just wearing black and white. This is just a little knit top. It's also more of a crop style. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, this feels tight. Am I gonna be able to put my head through here? Is this a kid top? I have to check. Oh gosh, this feels like I'm wearing like a surfing wetsuit or something like that. That's how tight this is. I feel like if I lift my arms, look at this. We are gonna send this one back if I can get it off of me. Oh God. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little unboxing. I guess I will be keeping the first set of pants and shirt I showed you guys, but that third shirt is definitely gonna be sent back. Anyways, I'm gonna get this stuff put up and then we're gonna start work for the day. I'll let you guys know how the whole feed planning works out later. Just finished a big meal prep for Cleo. All of this looks actually pretty good, even to me. <laughs> Do you smell it? Do you smell it? I don't know if I've ever talked about this on my channel, but about four months ago, I made the full switch to cooking all of her food. Just the changes that I have seen in her, as far as her skin, her energy, it's been beautiful. The most important thing is just research, 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 because it's a lot more than just cooking because the measurements have to be correct and you have to supplement their food with like other stuff like flaxseed and a source of calcium and stuff like that. But it's very rewarding. And if you have the time to do it, definitely recommend it. Can you calm down? Also, another nice thing about it is a lot of the food that she eats, like the vegetables, I eat the same thing. So it's not like I'm having to go out of my way and just buy a bunch of different stuff for her. I'm more so just buying extra since we are kind of sharing it now. So I don't know how many of you guys know this, but for the entire month of February, I was in the States and every time I go back, I end up just munching out every single evening on ice cream, cookies, chips, 
all the good things. It's because whenever I go to the store in the States, I'm just reminded of all these brands I forgot about. So by the time I got back to Korea at the beginning of March, I just had zero craving left for anything sweet. And that says a lot because usually every evening I like to have something, but it's literally been weeks and I have not had ice cream or like any kind of late night snack but finally tonight i got the craving so i was like let's go because it's been a long time so i picked this up from the convenience store i've actually never tried the kit kat bar it took such a long time for us to like crave anything yeah. mm. Mm. One time for week. see you guys tomorrow been on my studying Korean grind all morning. Oftentimes when somebody finds my channel, one of the first things they will ask is, can you speak Korean? How good is your Korean? And the best way for me to answer that would be, it could be a lot better, but it could also be a lot worse. So I feel like I have a basic understanding, like I can get around if that makes sense. And I'm no longer scared to just go into places and speak in my broken Korean, um, but it needs so, so much help. Some of my favorites, first of all, Sue and Carrots. I love her, all of her different books. I'm actually about to start her 100 Days Grammar Challenge because my grammar needs a lot of help. I also like the Talk To Me in Korean book, but I just feel like Sue and Carrots are more fun. She does a really good job at just completely breaking everything down and giving you enough examples um sue is actually one of my good friends too so huge shout out to her for making some really good books i just sometimes feel like the talk to me in korean ones can be a little too bland like it, it, it's just a bit boring and that makes me fall asleep so i prefer to use the sue and carrots books i did want to say though i am in the process of finding a Korean school to attend. Like I wanna to go to an in-person school. I haven't decided if I want it to be a part of a university yet or some kind of private hagwon situation. Um, I'll keep you guys updated obviously. I'm gonna show you like the full journey, but I'm just ready. I'm ready to take that next step. I need to really improve my Korean because it is definitely holding me back in a lot of ways. I feel like for day-to-day -day life, it's I'm okay. Like I don't really need tons of Korean, but Definitely like whenever I go to work meetings or if there's like a group work thing I'm going to It's embarrassing to not be good at Korean like when people are like how long have you lived here? And I'm like, oh almost five years and it's just embarrassing and I will say like people are always like oh You're so good at Korean But I know they're just saying that because they want to say something nice I don't think they actually mean it It's funny because I've been graduated from college for almost five years now and it took me like a full five years to start craving that in-person classroom experience again. And now that I'm craving it, I'm actually excited. Like I, I'm really looking forward to hopefully going to some kind of in-person class this summer. So I will keep you guys updated on that. Anyways, it's almost like 12.30, so I'm gonna get going with my day. I'm about to go visit an eco-friendly store. It's the shop in Busan that you can fill up your own like soap body wash fabric softener they also sell a bunch of eco-friendly stuff i'm not perfect i definitely recycle everything that i can but i want to just make a couple small changes and like try to do my part you know what i mean so yeah i'm gonna go visit there and then later this evening i'm gonna try to go to sleep as early as possible since i have an early morning tomorrow so i'll see you in a little bit <laughs> all leftover sugar cane. like a list of stuff I need to do this evening to prepare for my trip tomorrow because I literally have to wake up at 5 a.m. and leave my house by 6 30 a.m. tomorrow so we gotta do all that tonight I'm gonna do that after I eat dinner I'm really excited because we got a big package from my boyfriend's mom she sent us a ton of food so we're gonna cook some of that 
for dinner. It's really, really sweet how she does that for us every month. Hello from my little motel. I have like a three hour gap between filming locations because one of the locations I cannot go to until 7 p.m. I was debating between going to a cafe or I had the choice of just getting a motel for a couple hours. Here in Korea, you can literally get a room for two to three hours, which is really nice. And it's only like 20 bucks. I don't usually come to motels to rest, but today I was just not really in the mood to go to another cafe because it's a really long day. So I would rather just rest and then that way recharge for my final shooting scene. Here's my little room. I literally just devoured some eggs, a kimbap, and I also got a coke which is nice these motels are nice because it literally comes with everything and this one even has snacks which is fun there's even a computer if you want to play some video games and the view look at this view like wow yeah i thought you guys might enjoy a little behind the scenes as i said i don't usually come to a hotel to chill but because today is such a long day I felt like it was going to be a good idea just so I have like plenty of energy towards the end of the video. But yeah, it is I guess like 4.30 now. So I'm just chilling here for another couple of hours. It's also nice because I can get my phone recharged and I'm also charging this camera. So I'm going to go ahead and chill out for a little bit. I'll update you later. <laughs> Sunday I let myself literally rot all day yesterday I did the whole shebang got McDonald's for breakfast because we deserved it after that late night the night before literally slept for three hours in the middle of the day Just took like a three hour long nap finished watching physical 100. It was a very good rot day I'm really excited because starting from tomorrow Monday. We're gonna get back to moving content I've ordered some more stuff for my house and I'm excited I hope this video could give you a little peek at what my life is like as a freelancer here in Korea. And if you guys have any questions about what it is like to work here, obviously just comment them below and I will get back to you. As I said, I started off as a teacher and I would have never imagined when I moved here that I would literally be here five years later doing the type of work that I do now. And I can confidently say it would not be possible without you guys. So thank you so, so much for all of your support along the years. I hope you guys are all having an amazing spring. I hope the flowers are blooming wherever you are and I hope the sun is shining. I love you so much and I'll see you very soon in the next vlog. Bye.